any surah is, is broken down to an introduction in two parts. That's how this surah. You can see how other surahs are broken down differently. Some surahs I'll tell you the theme and purpose right at the beginning. Some surahs I'll tell you the theme and purpose somewhere in the middle. And some surahs like Surah Al-Baqarah I'll tell you the theme and purpose at the end. After we've broken down all the ayat, I'll tell you the theme and purpose is. It's just based on how easy it'll, 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 it is to kind of explain the theme and purpose. Whether I need the ayat for you to understand the theme and purpose. Or whether I need the theme and purpose for you to understand the ayat. Some, every surah is kind of different. So there'll be a different way of doing it. So it's 286 verses. That's the longest, the largest number of ayat in a certain surah. It is 6,144 words, which is the longest, the largest number of words in a surah that in the Quran. It's 49 pages, and it's the longest in the Quran by far. 49 by you can see the longest after that is is is, is going to be 29. So a full juzit difference, which is 20 pages. A full juzit difference between the Baqarah and the closest surah in length to it. Which is Surah Nisa. The closest one is Nisa. There's a whole just a difference. To understand Surah Al-Baqarah is very, very unique. Okay. It starts with the separated letters as a challenge. I talked about Alif Lam Mim before. I'm not going to repeat it again today. It's a challenge. It's telling the Arabs, aren't these the letters you use? To write your sermons and write your poetry and do all the stuff that you're good at? Go ahead then. Offer something as deep and as artistic and as beautiful and as beneficial as this if you can. And of course they couldn't. And, and, and they tried it. And they failed. So the introduction to the first 29 ayah of the surah uh, serves as an intro for the whole Quran as well. It's not just an intro for the surah itself, it's an introduction to the, the whole Mus'haf. The points of the intro that I talked about last time, I'll just break them down for you. Uh, again, you can, you can uh, with, with the way I'm going to do this, you can just have a Mus'haf open in front of you, and you can go through the verses with me. And if there are questions, if there's a certain word you want to ask, please put your hand up, I'm happy to answer a question if there's a word that you're unclear of. Or if you're reading the ayah and you're not sure how my breakdown applies to it, please ask me, because that helps me, inshallah, in, making, in, 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 in drawing this closer to you uh, as we go along. Whether, in the, whether you have a Quran or you have a uh, on your phone, it's fine. I would advise you to take a look at the verses as we go along. So, the first ayah talks about the confidence in the Quran itself. It's a book. This book starts with confidence in the book. I mean, it doesn't start by saying, there are mistakes, forgive us for the mistakes, we tried our best. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala off the bat telling you this is the book. There is no other book, there's no doubt this is the best book that will ever be read. And he's telling you to write that off the bat, and that gives you a certain level of confidence when you're reading it. Number two, there are three types of people. The verses from 2 to 20. They talk about the three types of people that exist in this world as far as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is concerned, as far as the Quran is concerned. The Quran has been taught from a socio- uh, uh, financial, political background. I mean, the Quran, that's what it's interested in. The Quran is not interested in talking about the breakdown from a scientific perspective. The Quran is not interested in talking about people who come from different geographical parts of the world, who have different uh, attributes from a racial perspective, or an ethnic perspective, or in a size perspective, or how tall they know. That's not important. These are, these are scientific things. The science is interested in all these stuff. The genes and the, no, the genetics, that's not what the Quran wants to talk about. The Quran talks about it from a socio, spiritual, financial, political background, which are four things all put in one big, one, one, one big group. There are three types of people. There are pious, those who are looking for answers, those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who want to be better, who want a proper way of life, who want to do the right thing, and that's something that they have ha already made a decision about, whether they are born Muslim or not born Muslim, that's what they're doing. Number two, there are disbelievers, people who are completely uninterested in anything to do with religion. They don't want to be talked, spoken to about this. They don't want any of this explained to them. They've already made up their minds, and Sawa'un alayhim, right? That's the ayah that we have in the surah itself, right? Sawa'un alayhim. A'anzartahum am lam tundirhum la yu'minun. The ayah at the beginning of the third page of the Quran. I'm going to use this to help me out with the numbers. Ayah number six, that's what it says. There's no point whether you talk to them or you don't talk to them, whether you warn them or not, they're not going to listen. And then the third uh, group are the in-betweeners. They're not spoken of as munafiqeen yet in this surah. They don't, the surah that's come out and say, these are the munafiqeen. No, these are the ones in the middle. These are the ones who are, aren't, aren't pious, specifically trying to be better, and they're not the ones who don't care. But they're the ones who are, mi are, 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 lost, in, uh, are lost in between these two, uh, two groups. And if you look at them, ayah number 10, it says, فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ There's something wrong with their hearts, which denies them from being of the pious, and keeps them somewhere in the middle. Their illness because they refuse to actually fix it. And the ayahs continue to talk about them and the mistakes that they made. And that goes up to ayah number 20. And we talked about this last time, so I'm not going to read everything just so I don't bore you. Uh, the third point is the universal command uh, of Allah to all mankind. If you look right, off the, right in the intro of the Quran, there is a universal command. It doesn't say, Ya It says, Ya Whenever there's an ayah, Ya that means it's going to go for all. 
This is a command that, that applies to every human being that ever lived. Ya ayyuhan nas, and the command itself is a universal command. It's not a specific one. It's not something that is specific to the deen. It's ya ayyuhan nas, u'budu rabbakum. So serve your Lord, or worship your Lord, regardless, yeah, depending on how you want to understand it. I still believe service is the right way of looking at it. If you like worship, that's fine. Either way is fine. Serve your Lord, the one who created you and those before you. Everyone you've ever seen, everyone who's ever lived, was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so serve him. There's no one else to serve. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you may achieve piety. I know the people we talked about at the beginning. There are three types of people, the pious, so that you may achieve piety. You need to serve him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he talks about himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala, a bit. So uh, it's up to ayah uh, number 23. His continuation, his commentary upon that verse itself, because he's, he's be telling you to serve him. Well, who is he, subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's what he explains. And the one who made the earth the way it is, and made the sky the way it is, and, and offered you all that you. And if you have any doubt in that, then bring something better. If you have a better theory, or if you have a better, better guidance, then go ahead and bring it, and you can't. The ayat after that, the, 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 the fourth point in the intro, punishment and reward. Ayat 24 and 25, they, they talk about in a, in, a, in a very simple way, the concept of punishment and the concept of reward. Ayat number, four, 20, uh, ayat number 24, So if you, if, if you haven't done this, and you choose not to do this, then prepare yourselves for punishment. And the ayat after that, وَبَشِّرِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أَنَّ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ And give the good news to those who believe and, and follow the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they will be rewarded. So in the intro, uh, all the all the basic stuff, all the big parts of the deen are being touched upon. Types of people, uh, the universal command that we're here to, to serve, that part, that there's punishment and reward. And the fifth point, the, <coughs> the Quran will give examples in all forms. Why is that here? Because as an intro is saying, well, you're going to read this book. There's an introduction to the book. You're going to be reading this book. This book will give you all types of examples. As small as a mosquito, <laughs> or something even smaller, or, or even more simple. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no shame in, in, in talking about these things, because He created it all, and there is magnificence in everything that He made, subhanahu wa ta'ala, so He'll teach it all. Some people will use these examples uh, to increase their own dis misguidance, and some people will use these examples to increase their guidance. Everyone will make their choice based on what they want. That's what the ayah says. يُضِلُّ بِهِ كَثِيرًا وَيَهْدِي بِهِ كَثِيرًا وَمَا يُضِلُّ بِهِ إِلَى الْفَاسِقِينَ And that goes up to ayah number 28, talking about that concept that He will teach, and some people will choose not to listen, and those are the ones who are mistaken, and, and, and that's their own choices. The final part, part of the of the intro, uh, it talks about, it touches quickly, or in one ayah, uh, about upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes. His magnificence subhanahu wa ta'ala, his knowledge. هُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى إِلَى السَّمَاءِ فَسَوَّاهُنَّ سَبَعَ سَمَاوَاتٍ وَهُوَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٍ He talks about two things, he created all, and he knows all subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the end of the introduction, just a reminder of who is of the one who was talking to you about all this stuff, the one who's, who the one who was bringing to you all these all these concepts and all, and all these breakdowns and all these ideas is the one who created all and is in those all. And that's the introduction. Those are twenty nine ayah and the first twenty nine ayah Surah Al Baqarah. So the first part of Surah Al Baqarah, um, the concept of what it's saying is saying you are a Khalifa. That's what you're here to do. This is your job description. This is your mission. This is your purpose. As a human being, that's really all you do. Um, this, is, this is your purpose of being on the planet itself. The concept of Khalifa is important to understand. In Arabic, the word itself is self-explanatory. If you understand Arabic, then the word Khalifa, you don't need someone to explain to you what that means. In English, it's a bit more of a challenge because of what it actually, what the word uh, translates. It doesn't really translate into, a, into a, a, a single word. It translates into a sentence. A Khalifa is someone who performs a duty or takes care of something on behalf of someone else. That's what Khalifa means. Someone who takes care or takes the responsibility of something on behalf of someone else. What that leads to us for us to understand is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put us here on earth to take care of things on His behalf. That's why when you do something, you do it in the name of whom? And that's why every surah starts like that. The reason the Qur'an starts with those words, Bismillah ya Rahman ya Rahim. Because from an Arabic perspective, Bismillah ya Rahman ya Rahim is an incomplete sentence. It's an incomplete sentence. It means nothing. 
unless you are unless you are imagining that there's some continuation. Like you, you, you can almost oh, I, I think he's, he means that. Bismillah, in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. What? In His name, what? There's, there's no such sentence that works like that. There has to be there has to be something else you're going to say after that. So Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In His name, we live, we serve, we recite everything. Every, we do it all in His name, Subhanahu wa Taala. If you're doing it in His name, then you do it. You need to do it the way He wants you to do it. It's in His name. It's on His behalf. So you make sure that you do it the way He ordered, or else it's not in His name anymore. You can't do something against His will or something that He wouldn't want you to do and say Bismillah. No. You can eat haram, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, that makes no sense. In his name, you would put that down. You wouldn't need it. In his name, you wouldn't take something that wasn't yours. In his name, you wouldn't harm someone else, because that's not what he wants, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is how we live. It's in his name, that's what the khalifa means. It's all, it's all part of one big picture. It's all the same thing. We live in his name, we're a khalifa. We are here to carry the responsibility on his behalf, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So ayah number 30 is our job, our mission description, or our purpose, if you may. And the ayah number 30 is the one where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and tells it to us in a very beautiful way. He tells it to us by the story of Adam. وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ And as your Lord said, uh, said to, the, uh, to, to the angels, إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً Indeed, I'm going to have on earth a khalifa, someone to take care of things on my behalf. There's a point here that we all miss. I'm going to inshallah fix this for you today. We always think about Adam alayhi salam. And whether you're joking, whether you're, you, know, you're, you mean it, like, ah, if you just didn't eat from the tree, none of this would have happened. Why did you need to eat? It's just an apple. How tempting can an apple be? It's an apple. It's not cake. It's not, it's not, it's, it's, it's not a donut. It's, it's an apple. What, there, must be, there must be other fruit there. Why did you eat from... Listen to what he said, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before Adam was even created, what did he say? He said, Inni ja'ilun bil ard. I'm going to put upon this planet a khalifa. Prior to Adam coming, the plan was for Adam to be here. It wasn't because he ate. No, no, that's not why. No, no, this was the plan of the bat. He was going to be on earth. The malaika knew it. The malaika already knew that he was coming to earth. Well, then why the scenario? So that Adam would learn a lesson. Adam had to come to earth with a lesson behind him. Doing, I had to have done something so we can understand what he's, what he's here to do and how, and how he's going to do it. And so that we can carry that lesson. Not for us to spend the rest of our lives talking about why Abu Adam did you do this? To be honest, on the Yom al Musa will lose his temper and say the same thing. And that we have a hadith from the Prophet so he tells us when Musa will come to, because on the Day of Judgment is so, such an intense moment. And people are in such... to improve and to change. We're the only race, the only species on the, on the planet that is capable of actually changing their surroundings to fit them, instead of them fitting into the surroundings. See, every other creature adapts, and that's why we have different types of evolution, because if you're not strong enough to live within this environment, you die off. And then whoever's strong will continue. But the human beings can live anywhere. And they don't adapt to the, uh, to the atmosphere. They make sure the atmosphere adapts to them. And they build homes, and they build factories, and they build places, and they, and they, and they build schools, and they build temples, and they, and they change their surroundings to fit them. And the Malaika saw that, no, oh, this is different. So this creature, Ya Rabbi, is different than all the ones that you created before. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Alam aqul lakum, then I tell you, I know something that you do not know. Wa'alam ma tu'udun, ma kuntum taktumun. And then he asked the Malaika to pray, to, to honor Adam alayhi salam. To honor him for what he was. And they did, but at least refused. And we'll talk about the story more as we go along. This story is going to be repeated a number of times, and I'll talk about aspects of it every time. But it just gives you this, the beginning of it. It tells you, yes, that uh, he refused, and he vowed that he was going to misguide Adam. And then Adam alayhi salam was told, Uskun anta wa zawjuka al-jannah, wa kula minha raghadan haythu shi'tuma, wa la taqraba hadhi shajara, fatakuna min al Oh Adam, you and your wife live here, eat from what you will, don't touch this tree. If you do, you're, 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 you're an oppressor, you've made a mistake, don't do it, you're not allowed to do it. فَأَزَلَّهُمَ الشَّيْطَانِ And the shaytan made them slip, made them make a mistake. فَأَخْرَجَهُمَا مِنْ مَا كَانَ فِي See how quickly the, the surah runs through these episodes. You'll see later in Surah Al-A'raf and Surah Al-Qa'ad, detailed of what Iblis exactly said to Adam and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Iblis and then what he said back. Oh, it's not the details here because that's not the point. 
The point is to tell you, I, Allah subhanahu wa created Adam, destined him for earth, and then put him through this experience. And then Adam made the mistake. He was told, go down now. You need to go down now. You need to learn to be better. You need to learn to control these whims of yours and these desires. You need to understand that you have a purpose to serve. That things won't come easily. That you have a larger, there's a bigger part, there's a bigger purpose for you, a bigger picture for you. So Adam Aysana was ascended to earth, but he was destined for it, as I number 30 told us right off the bat. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repented, accepted his repentance, and uh, Leave the heavens, leave, leave, the earth, leave the place of tranquility and ease, and go down. And if you are given guidance, you take that guidance and you follow that guidance, then you will find no sorrow and you will find no fear. And those who refuse it, that's the second part, or the second uh, paragraph in the chapter. The third paragraph in this first chapter, or first part, sorry. Examples of those who failed the mission. And this is the longest part of the first, the longest paragraph in the first part. So the first part goes from ayah number 30 to ayah number 41, basically. As you can see, it ends at four, ayah number one, 141. The ayah number 141 is actually the end of the first juzum. So if you go to Yosei, it's the end of the first juzum. The, the largest amount of verses and the largest amount of ayat, uh, 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 words that, that uh, talk about things is within this third uh, paragraph here. Examples of those who fail. Every time you see Bani Israel in the Quran, it's all they're there for. They're just examples for you. Meaning, don't, don't do what they did. Sometimes, it, they did, I, I, sometimes they're actually quoted of doing good things. Not everything about Israel is negative, by the way. Not everything about Bani Israel in the Quran is a negative. Sometimes it's a positive, and we're told, be like them. Sometimes you'll, and, you, and we'll come by these later in the Quran as we, as, as we go along. Because sometimes Bani Israel actually did the right thing. Allah's word of love and excellence was given to Bani Israel because of the perseverance they showed. Sometimes Bani Israel did right. Many times they didn't. So they are our example. Why? Because they're the last qawm before us who were given the same purpose. Musa in his Torah, he told them the same thing. You're a Khalifa. You're here to carry the mission. It's your purpose on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Musa alayhi salam went through a lot with them. Multiple phases. The phase in Egypt with Pharaoh and the phase after Egypt trying to make their way to the Holy Land and then failing and it was a long story for, for Musa. A lot of turbulence. So there's a lot of lessons for them to learn, for us to learn. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes through all these lessons saying, look, look what we did for them and look what they did. Don't be the same. Look at the mistakes they made. Don't make the same mistakes. And that's, and that's basically the breakdown from ayah number 40 to 123. We're going to talk about them in a moment, but I'm just breaking down the first part for you. The paragraph after that ends up ayah number 20, 123. We're going to come back and go through ayah number 41 and we're going to go through them all, inshallah. But it ends at ayah number 123. At that point, the ayah is The ayah number 124 to 134. Example of those who succeeded and it talks about Ibrahim alayhi salam, and it talks about Yaqub alayhi salam, up to ayah number 134, to the end of the second page. Wa idhi rabbuhu. Rabbuhu is the fa'il, so it has a dhamma on it. So Allah, so as the, his Lord, Ibrahim's Lord, tested him. Put him, put him to the test. Bi kalimat, kalimat means, I'll right, go back. Okay, no. Right. Kalimat means words. Again, the same thing. Asma is a very abstract way of talking about things. Kalimat is very abstract. He was given guidance, he was given words, he was told the things to do. And Ibrahim did his job to its, to its full, he fulfilled his job. I didn't make a mistake. I'm going to make you an imam. An imam is another word for khalifa. An imam is just another word of khalifa. That's why we have the same words. That's why the Khalifa, uh, yani the actual Khalifa in Islam is supposed to be the Imam. <laughs> That's how it's supposed to work. It's supposed to be the same thing. Works in the same way. So Ibrahim Islam was given that opportunity. He was told you're an Imam. What did Ibrahim say immediately? So look at the, the, the lesson that we take right away. Qala, wa min dhurriyyati, Ya Rabbi, make also the great Khulafa from my, from, from my descendants. Who are his descendants, alayhi salam? Amongst them, who are his descendants? 
aren't the people that we just talked about, but Ismail, or his descendants, those are right out Ibrahim, yeah, and uh, Ishaq, Yaqub, and the Banu Ismail. So there are qalaw min dhurriyati qala la yanalu ahdi al-zalimi. No, that doesn't, that's not how it works. It's, this is not an issue of inheritance. I Meaning you just inherit the deen and you keep, no. If you are an oppressor, if you make mistakes, then no, you're not going to be the Khalifa. You're not an imam. You're not someone who is an example who can carry the mission the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted. You have to do it right. And then of course there's a, uh, a very large lesson uh, in, in that itself. Meaning, whoever, maybe from the, many people from the descendants of Ibrahim will carry the message. But some of them won't. And some people from, who aren't descended from Ibrahim will carry the message. And some of them won't. So it's really a choice that you will make you know, on your own. And then the ayat go and explain to us uh, aspects of Ibrahim uh, uh, fulfilling the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it talks about Ya'qub himself. It's important to talk about Ya'qub because Ya'qub and Israel and, it, it, and, the, and the ayat before from ayah 40 to 123 have just talked about all the mistakes that Israel made. So it's the same, it's not Ibrahim's fault, neither nor was it Ya'qub's fault. Ya'qub actually, Am kuntum shuhada'a idh hadra Ya'qub al mawt idh qala li banihi. He gave us the example where you, and you weren't there the day Ya'qub was passing away when he told to his children, who are his children? But it was like the same people that we were just talking about a, a few a verses before. Ma ta'abudun min ba'di, who do you serve after me? They said, so they acknowledged their mission, they acknowledged what they were doing, but then they messed it up. They didn't do it properly. The final part of the, the final paragraph of the first part is from Ayah 135 to Ayah 140. It was the last page of the Juzur, and it's advice for us. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through uh, the verses between 440 and 123 first, and then we'll talk about the ayat that have, uh, have the advice. These are very, very important. They start by saying, وَقَالُوا كُونُوا هُودًا أَوْ نَصَارًا تَهْتَدُوا قُلْ بَلْ مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا وَمَا كَانَ مِنْ الْمُشْرِكِينَ قُولُوا آمَنَّا And then Allah subhanahu wa tells us what to say. Others are saying, be Christian or be Jews, and that's how you'll make it. Say, no, no, we follow the way of Ibrahim alayhi salam, Hanifa al-Muslima. And he was never someone who initially associated anyone with Allah. And then he tells us what to say and what to believe, how to think. So we're given, we're given our narrative. We're given our narrative of belief. Just like Ibrahim was given his words, and Yaqub was given his, and Musa later was given his, we're given ours as well. And that's basically the first part, or the first part of Surah Al-Baqarah. All it says is, you're the Khalifa. Here's an example of, uh, here's, here's the first Khalifa story of Adam. Here are the people who didn't do it well to learn from their mistakes. And here's the people who did it well, Ibrahim and Yaqub. And here's some advice for you. Very, it's, it's, it's very simple. Now, points regarding the ayat about Bani Israel. So these are from 40, basically to 123. So I'll break them down for you. Because these are the ones that if you're trying to memorize Surah Al-Baqarah, these are the ones that you find difficult. Because there's at least uh, eight to nine pages, and there are a lot of details. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks a lot about a lot of issues that happened with Bani Israel, one after the other, and you can get lost. So the first one, uh, from 40 to 46, very beautifully, the, the, the Banu Israel commands. The commands that Bani Israel were given. Here's examples of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Bani Israel to do. Whenever he, whenever he tells us what he told Bani Israel, what does that mean for us? We're told the same. We're told the same. The same applies to us. They're going to show you how Bani Israel didn't really follow them, so that we don't make the same mistake. And unfortunately, that's never the, that's, that's not the story. Just because we don't seem to, to look at this the way we're supposed to. So what are the, what are the commands? From 40 to 46, very beautiful verses. The, uh, the first one, Ya Bani Israel, O sons of Israel, sons of Yaqub, Uzkuru ni'mati allati an'amtu alaykum, wa awfu bi'ahdi, ufi bi'ahdikum, wa iyaya farhamun, recall upon you the blessing that I gave you. What's the blessing? I gave you the Torah, I gave you Musa, I gave you religion, I gave you guidance. Remember that. Wa awfu bi'ahdi, and fulfill your covenant with me. Ufi bi'ahdikum, I will fulfill, fulfill my covenant with you. There's a covenant, there's an agreement. You are a Khalifa, you're here to do it on my behalf. Fulfill your parts, and I will fulfill mine. Wa iyaya farhabun, and fear me. Have fear in your heart of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa aminu, the second one. Wa aminu, the first two. Awfu bi ahdi, ufi bi ahdikum. Or if you want to say, uthkuru ni'mati is the first command. Awfu bi ahdi, fulfill the covenant, the second command. And then wa iyaya farhabun, and have fear of Allah in your heart, the third command. The fourth one. Wa aminu, bima anzaltu musaddiqan lima ma'akum. Wa la takun wa awwala kafirin bih. And believe in what I have descended upon you. And don't be the first person to disbelieve in it. 
Don't throw it away. You give them the, the words of Musa and then you immediately... And they did it. You'll see in a moment they're going to they're start worshipping the ijil. They're going to make a kafar of gold and start worshipping it. You were just given the commandments just a few days ago. What happened? You were just, just a minute ago you were explained to you, it was explained to you what to do. وَلَا تَشْتَغُوا بِآيَاتِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا وَإِيَّا يَفَتَّقُونَ and don't sell the verses of Allah or the meanings of Allah or the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for personal gain. But it means, this, this is an example of a Quranic phrase or linguistic complex. You're going to see it in the Quran many times. Or to buy using my verses a small amount or something that is worthless. So don't use the verses of Allah, the teachings of Allah, as currency to, to, to gain, to gain personal gain, to, to, to achieve personal gain in your life. That's not what these are here for. Don't use the verses of Allah to achieve a personal agenda, to get ahead. Don't. But we say we're told not to do that. It applies to us. Now they did it. Oh, they did it. And they did it well, at least. <laughs> If they did it, it was wrong, but they did it well at least. Now we, we, I don't know, we did it and we didn't do it well. And not only did we make the same mistake, but we, 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 we were horrible at it. So we got nothing. We didn't get, we didn't follow the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we didn't even achieve our personal agendas. We have nothing. Nothing to show for this anymore. have piety. And don't mix haqq and batil. Don't make haqq difficult to see. Don't try and elude the person in front of you that the battle is haqq and haqq is battle so you can get what you want. Don't tell them that this is this and it's not because you have knowledge and they don't. Are you seeing what they're being told? You were taught the message. Explain the message clearly to everyone. Make sure, that, that you're, make sure you're being honest about it. Don't tell them the part you want to tell them and withhold information that you don't want them to know so that you can elude them that this is haqq but it's not haqq. Haqq is here, you just don't want to show it to them. وَلَا تِلْبِسُ الْحَقْقَ بِالْبَاطِلِ وَتَكْتُمُ الْحَقْقَ And you withhold the truth. You don't want to talk about it. وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ And you know it. You know you're withholding the truth. You know you're not telling the full story. Isn't that the story of our lives? Isn't, isn't that the reality of our deen right now? Everyone will only tell you the part of it that they want to tell you. And they'll hold on to the part that they don't want. They know that's not important. I went through, I studied, the. I, I was very fortunate, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put me to study in different parts of the world. Very, very important time. In the 90s, I was in, I was in uh, Saudi Arabia. The peak of the Salafi movement. And that's who taught me for, for 10 years. I was, was grounded into my land. And then I was sent to Damascus in the early 2000s, the peak of the Sufi movement. And I was dancing in mosques with, with, with Shiuch for years. And it took me years to finally take a moment, take a step back and see why is it that we're so different? And who's, who's wrong here? <laughs> you can laugh, but that, that's the... Uh... And then you figure out that a lot of the information is being withheld. That people are, are purposefully, for whatever reason, they're, they're not telling the whole story. And it became a part of something that is important to me and I hope, I hope that I can relate it to what's important to you. Your job is not to control people's opinions. Your job is to relay the truth. The part of the truth that you like and the part of the truth that you don't. Just relay it the way it is. The part of the truth that will make it popular with people and the part of it that will make it unpopular with people. Because your job is not to gain popularity, it's not to get people to do what you think is right. Your job is to explain things to the best of your ability as clearly as possible. That's my job. I have no other. No one at other no, no other person who sits in these type of spots and speaks. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of the most difficult things to do, the most, the most difficult responsibilities to carry. The only job is to explain things to the best of your ability, truthfully, and to question your intentions every single time, and to question your understandings every time, making sure, am I saying this? Properly, truthfully, sincerely, or do I have an agenda that I'm trying to push forward? Questioning yourself every time, making sure that you're being honest. Questioning your understanding. Did I understand this properly? Did the person who explained this to me the first time, was he was he in, in sincere when he explained it to me? What did other people say? Looking at what everyone said and then trying to take the best of it all and, then, and relay it. That's the job. That's the job. 
Subhanallah. Well, uh, you feel like you just read one, one, one page of the Quran and you have answers. <laughs> you feel like you have all the answers in the world. Imagining, imagine reading the whole thing, understanding it in detail. Imagine how your brain would feel and your, how your heart would feel. They were given rituals as well. You were told, pray, praise your Lord and, 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 and establish prayer properly. We'll talk about that inshallah in the surah where, where it's more relevant inshallah in detail. The salah and zakah are the two, um, again, phrases and linguistic complexes in the Quran that you need to know. Whenever he says salah and zakah together, what he is referring to are the two types of acts of worship. There are two types. There are, there's an act of worship that doesn't serve anyone, but the relationship between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the symbol of that is salah. That's the symbol of it. And there are acts of worship that directly help other people. Like zakah, the symbol of it is zakah. So when he said, Aqeem wa salawat wa zakah, you're like, well, why is Ramadan? No, no, it's not about that. Ramadan is not important. The kinds of the deal are two examples. He's not going to, every time he tells you to worship him, tell you every single act of worship, the Quran would be a, a million pages. You'd never finish. Wa aqeem wa salawat wa zakah wa sumu Ramadan wa hujjul bayt wa burul bari day, it takes too long. So this gives you the two basics, the two symbols. Here's the, the, the part that only helps you, the beauty, the, the rituals, where you sit with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you speak to him. That, that's between you and Allah. I don't really directly benefit from that. Whether you do it or not, it doesn't really make a difference to my life. But when you pray zakah, it does. And then all the other acts of worship that uh, are similar to zakah also affect my life uh, and, and everyone around us. وَرْكَعُوا مَعَ الرَّاكِعِينَ I'll talk about ruku'ah. There'll be a part about ruku'ah. Again, I don't want to take, just take, take forever. أَتَأْمُرُونَ النَّاسَ These ayat are important. Do you command people of piety and of high virtues. But then so unfisical when you forget to follow that yourself. Uh, you can almost yeah, subhanAllah. The answers of all our problems were within the first forty five verses of the Quran. You can go walk around and preach to people and forget to follow yourselves. Who preaches more ideals than Muslims? Who acts like they have a higher moral and ethical horse uh, in the world more than Muslims? We act like we, and then how do we behave? We go to a park and we leave, and turn it into a garbage bin. With the people who care the least about the environment, the least about domestic abuse, the least about uh, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, violence and poverty and, and, and disease. And we care the least about all these things, but we're going to preach high ethics and morals to everyone. We tell everyone, ah, be like us, we don't drink, we don't, uh, we don't do this and we don't do that. You're going to go tell people how to live their lives with themselves and you can't even... Eat. Take care of yourselves. How, how can, how, why would people accept this now? Is my question. I don't blame anyone who doesn't accept it. Why would they? If they came and took a look at, look at our societies and our communities, whether in the West or the East, why would they do it? I remember my mother told me something once. She's like, I accepted Islam because of your dad. I looked at your dad the way he lived. And I thought it was something amazing. And then I almost lost my faith once I moved back to the Middle East with him. Because that's, that, that, this is not. And the only reason she, she was, the reason she held on to her Islam is that my dad kept on telling her that this is not Islam. <laughs> what you're seeing, there's nothing to do with it. There's nothing to do with it at all. Don't just, just look away. This is not how it's supposed to be done. And that's how she kept on going. And it was very sad. You know, it hurts. Really, well, it really does. That, that, that's how we've, how, how we've, and it's how Allah's tough and Allah's tough and Allah's tough. We're probably doing the same thing. And you're the ones who are reciting the book. You know the book, you have the book, it's all there. And you're reciting it and you go tell people to do something, you don't do it yourself. You can't organize yourself, you have no leadership, you have no direction, you have nothing. You can't take care of, the, of your ill, you can't take care of your weak, you can't take care of your elderly. You can't take care of those who are brothers and sisters who are suffering, who have no voice, you can't give them a voice, you can't do anything. What, what, why would people accept it? I don't know why. I feel bad about this. Is, I know, I'm, I'm pessimistic sometimes. But, but, you know, I don't believe that you can build unless you, unless you can, you can't change unless you identify the problems. If you can say, here, here, here's the problems. They have to be crystal clear to everyone so we can start fixing. But if we don't identify problems, if we act like they don't, they're not there, that's not there, that's not there, mental illness is not a problem in our community, no one has it, no one suffers from any of these things. Jinn and Sahir and Hassan and all that crazy stuff is not a part of our, of our mentality, we don't know how to get rid of it. If we don't know how to get rid of these things, how do we fix it? How do we start, how do we start moving forward? We don't. Want to believe it's all going well? Well, good for you. Good luck. This is a really important ayah. I, I, so important. We'll go back to Surah Al-Fatihah for a moment. He said, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ 
It's you whom we serve, and it's from you whom we seek aid. And I, and I specifically did not say nasta'in, talk about nasta'in in Surah Al-Fatiha because I was waiting for this verse. Because then he came and told you, وَاسْتَعِينُوا And then seek aid using sabr and salah. Use patience and use prayer. What are, you, what are you seeking aid to do? You're seeking aid to do iya You see, all the acts of worship that you do, are allowing you to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The acts of worship, the actual salah is not serving Allah. Serving Allah is when you go out and you and you fulfill His commands on earth. And you take by the hand of the orphan and the miskeen. And you bring justice to a place where there's oppression. That is ibadah, that is how you serve Him. The acts of worship, this is isti'ana. You're, you're using those, you're using those to achieve that goal. That's why he didn't say, wa'budu bi sabri wa salah. He said, wa'sta'inu, use those as aid. Use sabr and salah. Subhanallah, very specific. وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ It's difficult to do. إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ Except those who have closeness, who have a certain level of closeness to God, only the ones who can actually do that. Who can actually pray and use their prayer as fuel to continue to do their job the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants them to do it. Only those who have something in their heart. Some, some sincerity, some realness, some uniqueness inside. And if they do it, then they will use their patience and use salah, and they'll go forward in life, and they'll serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appropriately in the way He wants. Okay, so that's the first part. Yeah, the Badu Sayyid commands up to ayah number 46. From 47 to 66, so if you take a, a look at the ayah, from 47, where he starts saying, Ya Bani Israel, Uzkuru ni'mati alati an'amtu alaykum wa anni fadwaltukum ala al-alameen, O Bani Israel, remember the, the, the blessing I gave upon you and that I chose you and, I, and that I favored you over everyone. Over everyone. So, what does that mean? Again, if you're learning, if we're learning from Banu Israel, it's the same thing. They were favored overall, and then we were favored after them. But what does that mean, that we're favored? Well, he's going to show you what it means. Does it mean that we're better, we're higher ranked, we're close? No, it means that you were given a higher responsibility. You were given more guidance, so you're, you're expected to be, behave better. You're expected to perform better. That's all it means. It never meant anything else. Today, that's not how they understand it, and it's not how we understand it either. They definitely don't use it that way, and we're not doing any better. The fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored them at a certain period of time, and then favored us after, is not that He loves us more, that we're closer to Him. No, it means that He gave us the opportunity, and He expects us to perform at a higher level than others, because He gave us a higher responsibility, that's all it means. And then he gives us all the examples of how many times they messed up. All the repeated mistakes. So from 47 to 66. You look at the look at the verses, they go on quite a while. And they talk about how Bani Israel were saved from Fir'aun, ayah number 49. You were saved. With Faraqna Bikumul Bahran, ayah number 50. And then we split the sea for you. And you saw it with your eyes, and you saw Fir'aun drown with your own eyes. With Wa'adda Musa Arba'ina Layla. And we gave Musa a 40 night appointment to teach him a Torah. And he came back to you and you were already Tumatahatum al Ajim. And you were already worshipping the calf. We just saved you from Fir'aun, split the sea for you, and drowned him. And immediately, Tumatahatum al Ajim, Tumma'afauna ankum, ayah number 52. And then we forgave you for that. But you don't think, La'allakum Kashkun, so maybe you'll show some gratitude that we forgave you for that. And with Atayna Musa al Kitab, ayah number 40 53, we gave Musa the book and we gave him the difference, meaning the way of Furqan means the way of life that will make you different, that will make you, that will allow you to become better. Furqan is farq, it's a difference. It'll make, this is what will make the difference. You take this, you live by it, it'll make the difference. It will, it will achieve the difference between you and others living around you. You'll, be, you'll start living in a better way and doing a better job and becoming more compassionate and more humble and, 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 and more effective and efficient. Ayah number 454. And then Musa reminds them reminds of their mistake and asks them to repent. Some of them do, some of them don't. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not just, not just here to, to bash Banu Israel. In ayah number 54, he says that they repented. Right? Uh, what I'm going to do next time is try and have somehow maybe half of the screen, the, the, the page that we're talking about. I think that would be even more. Right? Wouldn't it be helpful if the page was up there? Yeah, I don't know how to. 
I'm not, I'm not that good. We'll, we'll try and find a way to, to maybe split the page in half, and that way the, the page that we're talking about is there, so if you're not looking at the Quran, you can see the page up there. Inshallah, next time try to get that done. So he tells them, he told them to, to perform a certain act of repentance. So, and they did it, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repented, accepted their repentance. He accepted their repentance. Now, everything Bani Israel did was wrong. Certain, they, 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 at that moment, when they made that mistake, they repented, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted their repentance. And they said, With Qutim Ya Musa, Lan Nu'mina Lak, Hadda Lam Allah Hajar, I number 55. And then, and then you go ahead and. Yes, go ahead. We don't really know for sure. There are different uh, uh, opinions among scholars, and that's why I didn't really talk about it, because I don't know exactly what the meaning is there. Some scholars say that they were asked to, uh, uh, to perform a ritual where they ended their own lives. We don't know exactly what that meant. It could mean something else as well. could mean that you have to destroy your inner uh, arrogance and vanity. But nafs as in the figurative nafs, meaning that you have to go take some time alone and learn to take away your arrogance and vanity come back humble right so so both could apply I don't know I don't think it really matters because the point here that you're learning is that they were asked to repent they did it and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted repentance the details I don't know the scholars aren't very clear on it there's a lot of difference of opinion yeah that's what I mean kill, kill your nafs as in take away vanity and arrogance or kill your ego so both ways are proper you can understand them both ways it's not a problem however you want to look at it but if you're someone who read the, tafsir, the traditional tafsir and you saw that it meant to end their own lives I have no that's fine I, I, I kind of side on the side I'm on the side that it was to kill your ego to take away your arrogance Allahu alam. we're not sure but the point is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted their repentance meaning they, they were given a command and they actually did it so everything they did was wrong and it's all there for us to learn for from. But then they go ahead and they say, We won't believe in you for you. Look, Musa, you know, we're, we're on the rails here. We're trying to believe. We're not doing very well. If for this to work, we need to see God. We need to see God. You get to speak to Him. It's not fair. We have to see Him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, with a bolt of lightning or a sa'iq, or we're not sure what that exactly means, he took all their lives. Then He brought them back to life again. So they didn't see God. But they died and they were resurrected. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ How many times, how many chances have they been given so far? Just on this page. A chance after chance. You make a mistake, and then we go ahead and forgive you. And then you repent and we accept it. And then you go ahead and ask for the, you have the audacity, you have the acts to see God yourselves. We won't believe in you unless, we won't believe unless we see. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them another chance. Not only were they resurrected, they were given the ghamam. Meaning for 40 years you didn't have to work for your food. Water came to you and food came to you. All you have to do is just learn. <laughs> they learned nothing. They didn't want. And they didn't oppress us. Another complex of the Quran. Another Quranic complex. Another phrase that you need to know. They never oppressed us. Nothing you do oppresses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never mis and misunderstand this. That when you, mis you don't listen to Him or you disobey Him, it never means that you oppressed Allah or you harmed Allah. No, no. You have no ability to do that. None of us do. But what you do is you oppress yourself. You oppress yourself. You harm yourselves. And then that. It's not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's And the ayat 58 and 59 continue. With Qulna and then we told you, enter the holy land, enter Jerusalem, minha ragadan, eat from wherever you want. It's naim for you, ragada, it's something for you to enjoy. and enter with humility. Enter like the Prophet entered Fatih Makkah. Now you know how he learned it, now you know why the Prophet ﷺ, when he entered Mecca, he entered with his head touching the mane of his, of his horse in full humility. Why? Because here, وَدْخُلُ الْبَابَ سُجْدَ بَنِي So they didn't do it. They didn't do it. So Allah said, the Prophet ﷺ, why am I going to do it? I'm going to enter the city sujjada in full humility. And you can see the Prophet ﷺ learning from before. And it's beautiful. Well, it's beautiful to live when you read. This is a Madani, early Madani surah. He was going to follow this command ten years later. Exactly the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it. Ask for forgiveness. We'll forgive your sins. And we'll offer more to those who are uh, so excellence. 
And then the people who, the people of Islam, who oppressed themselves, they changed all. They entered with arrogance, they didn't ask for forgiveness, and they ruined it all. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished them. We're going to talk about ayah number 58, 59 later. Once we come to Surah Al-A'raf. There's two verses that are almost identical. Almost identical, if not for what? 16 differences? I'm sorry, 16 differences. <laughs> One of the most two difficult set of verses to memorize. There are 16 differences. Or maybe, maybe less, maybe I have the wrong. But it's between 12 and 16. Maybe 12. Maybe a very large number of differences in two verses. And I will tell you exactly why, each one of them. And you'll see how, because this surah talks about this, and this surah talks about this. That's why they're completely different in the way they're going to be. So even the same words are being told. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding Banu Israel of his ni'mah. You, you see what I gave you? I gave you this and I, uh, look at my ni'mah, look at my blessing upon you. Look how many things I gave you, look how you behaved. And so that's not the point. So he uses different words. We'll talk, we'll talk about that inshallah uh, once we come to it. And then it gives us the example when Musa salam, finally had them stay in, 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 around Jerusalem and they were given a place to eat and there was water. With Qultum Ya Musa, ayah number 61, No, this is, the food is not enough. You don't like the food, Musa. You want more to eat. You refused to enter Jerusalem when you were told to do it and you were punished. And now Allah, and after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you water and gave you sustenance. And you say, No, we want more food. فَادْعُوا لَنَا رَبَّكَ أَسْكُوا الْوَرْدِ يُخْرِجْ لَنَا مِمَّا تُنْبِتُ الْأَرْضُ مِنْ بَقْلِهَا وَقِثَّائِهَا وَفُومِهَا وَعَجَسِهَا وَبَصَلِهَا very, MashaAllah, very, very specific I, 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 uh, request. Yeah, Musa asked your Lord, we would like baqal, we would like uh, certain types of wheat, or we would like grain, wa qithaiha, we would like cucumbers, we would like foom, fool, we would like certain types of fool, we would like ajas, we want lentils, wa basaliha, we would like onions. This earth is not, the, 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 the place we're living in doesn't have all that. Ask your Lord to take us to a place. Qala atastabdiruna alladhi huwa adna, billadhi huwa khayr. You don't want to go into Jerusalem where that, those things don't exist at the time. And you want to go to a place where, where, it, just, where it does just because you don't have... Just for the food? For the food. You're going to go from the Holy Land to somewhere else for the food. I go to Egypt. What can I tell you? This, this, is, how you, this is your mentality. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished them with continuous... Uh, humility, not the, the, the good type of humility, but the bad type of humiliation. Well, maskana and having no integrity, because they, they they didn't everything he gave them. Subhanahu wa taala. They continued to have, to focus on the wrong thing and ask for the wrong, repeated mistakes. That's up to ayah number sixty-one. And then Allah subhanahu wa taala talks about uh, at, the, at the end of uh, Musa alayhi salam. So, at a certain point, Allah subhanahu wa taala had a mountain almost crumble upon them. Yes. Well, um, Go back to Egypt type of food. Is it referring to the slavery they were in before? It could be reference to the slavery. It could be for just the fact that they weren't fulfilling their, their purpose and they and they lacked that. It could be. We don't know for sure. Historians still differ whether that was you know they, they whether this was we don't know if the timeline is exact, but it could be that they were enslaved for at least a couple of centuries. It could be this is what they're talking about, it could be something else. I am not sure. A long time. I don't, yes. Uh, how can we learn from uh, verse uh, 61? Mm -hmm. how, how does that apply to us? Like, so, okay, very simple. Huh? So, when your Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you something that is high quality, but it's not exactly what you want, meaning there are certain aspects of it that you, you're not happy with. But it's a very high quality thing. You're given an opportunity that is great. We all have that in our lives. We all have the opportunity to achieve great things, but we'd rather do something that is not that is worthless and useless. Every child and every young person in their lives are given the opportunity to go to the best university, to learn the best, and to work, and to become the best in their field, but they'd rather play station for six hours. PlayStation for six hours, seven hours a day. It, it's a why are you why, why are you going from this to this? Why because this is a bit more fun? Because it's more enjoyable? Is that why? For them it was food. But it was like they'd rather food than, than than fulfilling the purpose in Jerusalem. Why? Because it's just easier. It's, it, you know, they, they want a better better cuisine uh, apparently at the time. And for many of us we have the same problem where we can't we don't value what is valuable. So we don't know what is what, what we actually have. We we look for something else. You, for example, if you're married, you have a spouse who's fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who love you, who cherish you, who take care of all the great things, but you're focused on maybe something dumb, like, you know, she's not as, you know, as 
physically the way you want it to look, or he doesn't look, or he doesn't, he doesn't dress the way, some stupid thing that is based on appearance, or, or maybe she doesn't, when she cooks, she doesn't put as much salt as, you know, as you would like, or some silly thing that is useless, that's meaningless. I just tell you, you're going to exchange this, what Allah subhanahu has given you in its high value for something simple? Sometimes he'll tell you, hey, Bipu, all right, take it. You want it? You don't want it? Take it. And then 15 years later, 10 years later, 50 years later, you'll look back and say, what, what was I thinking? How did I? Everyone does it, by the way. We're just, we're just not very good at uh, acknowledging it and later on you know, admitting. If you're young, be smart. Value what you have. Make sure you know what, you, what you're given. Make sure the opportunities you have are clear to you. So, so that he doesn't take them away, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and give you something worthless. What well, happens a lot. You're given here, here, here. Take this. The best thing of all. And you're like, eh, I'd rather hang out with my friends. I'd rather do this or that. I'd, I'd rather enjoy my time. Fine. So how about take it away and give you what you wanted? 20 years later, you come back and say, I don't know what happened. Sheikh, I don't know what happened. Remember, I used to come to the Mesti, used to come to your halakha, used to remember his Quran. Look at me now. Tattoos and <laughs> a mess. Yeah, I can see. It happens to, it happens to many people. Alhamdulillah, I didn't. Alhamdulillah, yes. Maybe that's why you think Yeah, it's Ibitu. Go down. Yeah, you're falling down again. That's exactly why he said Ibitu. It has nothing to do with the geography of the area. It's Ibitu as in fall down to something less important and less valuable. And I had after that talk about وَإِذَا خَذْنَا مِثَاقَكُمْ وَرَفَعْنَا فَوْقَكُمْ الطُّورِ خُذُوا مَا آتَيْنَكُمْ بِقُوَّةِ وَاذْكُرُوا مَا فِيهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Ayah number 363 ثُمَّ تَوَلَّيْتُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ فَلَوْ لَفَضُوا اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ لَكُنْتُمْ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ At the end of, 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 of Musa A.S. life with Israel, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had a mountain shake and almost crumble upon them. And before it fell upon them, he was telling them, take the book, Banu Israel. Take it strong. Take it solidly. Stop playing around or else this mountain will come down. They said, okay, we'll take it. And then after they took it, to they didn't do it. After they were away from the mountain, they, they threw it away again. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's bounty and his rahma, he didn't punish them. He gave them another chance. And then he talks about the concept of the Sabbath, where he, they were told not to work on Saturday, so they would throw their nets on Friday night and pick them up on Sunday night, on Sunday morning, thinking they were fooling God. فَقُلْنَا لَهُمْ كُونُوا قِرَدَةً خَاسِئِينَ فَجَعَلْنَاهَا نَكَالًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهَا وَمَا خَلْفَهَا مُعِضَةً لِلْمُتَّقِينَ And they were punished at that point by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The concept of becoming apes or qirada is more of a figure of speech than it is. Like they weren't actually turned into apes. They didn't become animals. No. It's just that the, their level of functioning, as far as Allah is concerned, from a spiritual perspective, he, they were acting as if they had no choice, as if they didn't have a higher level of, 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 of functioning. As if they didn't, they didn't understand spirituality, they didn't understand greater meanings in life. They were living at, like animals in terms of the way they thought, not in terms of their figure. And that's the end of the, the second uh, paragraph. Uh, Ayah number 61 is the one, of course, uh, you, know, you have, who asked me the question? Someone asked me the question. And, uh, you asked me, no, someone, you asked me the question. Or, you did, yeah. So uh, we're going to talk about reducing status. That's, that's what I61. Meaning they reduced their own status. From being, from being destined to greatness to being destined to nothing. Because they wanted fool and adas and basal. That's what they wanted. So here you go. Here's fool and adas and basal. As you like. Okay. I think we're out of time. Yes, we are. So, ugh, I didn't get to it. So you can see it's written in blue. Because it's special. Yeah. That's how creative I am. <laughs> so we'll talk about the story of Al-Baqarah. It's still a part of Banu Israel's story, but this is the story that Allah called the surah based on. The first surah in the Quran that tells you your mission, that explains the deen and basics, was named the cow. You may think, why would I name it? No, no, it's a very, it's a very, very relevant name. Why? Because it talks about a story that is extremely deep. What I wrote a couple of papers during my years of university, and the, the paper I wrote uh, for graduation was based on the story of Al-Baqarah. Just a breakdown of why it's there and what the point of it is. So I'll get to Yani brag about explaining this inshallah next uh, <laughs> next week, and inshallah Was this helpful in general? Is this okay? Fixing it like this would work? Okay, khalas tamam, alhamdulillah. Give me more feedback. If, there's, if it's too deep or not enough, let me know and we'll try to tweak this as we go along. Subhanahu wa bihamdik shalallahu ilaha illa tasafiq wa tubu ilayk. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alihi wa sallam 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 wa sall